Hello, thanks for joining me. It's Vicki McCarthy from and I have a whole selection of boxes based on the Polka Dot Parade Designer Series Paper Suite. And some projects will be using the envelope punch board and today we'll be using it. I wanted to point out that it has both metric and imperial measurements on it. So I'm going to start off with the imperial measurements with a 12 by 12 piece of paper. You want to line it up at the four inch mark. Take out your folding tool and you're going to punch first. Find where that little ridge is without pressing down too hard because remember this is designer series paper, you don't want to tear it. You're going to turn it at 90 degrees, punch and do the same again. Now you're not going to be able to reach all the way to the edge of the paper, don't worry about that because we're going to flip the paper over and you'll see how we fix that issue. So when you've done that on all four sides at the four inch mark, then you're going to flip your paper over and do the same again. So you're going to find the four inch mark and punch and then score again. And you'll see that this time that line is going to line up perfectly with the rest of the lines that you've already made. So it's just a four inch punch, four inch punch over and over again until you've got all your lines joined up. Four times on one side, four times on the other. This is the Rich Razzleberry in the Polka Dot Parade paper. And I'll be using all the Polka Dot Parade suite throughout the next few projects that we do over the next couple of weeks. Now to find the next mark, you're going to go into that little gully and you're going to meet it up there and then punch down. So you're not going to measure, you're going to actually feel for that little spot there where there's a ridge, punch down, and join the lines up to that ridge. And these are going to be your folding lines right on the outside of the box. Again, just find that little ridge, punching down. And you're going to do this four times all the way around. And you'll see the box is now scored. And you will no longer need that punch board, so you can move that away. And you can see where the score lines are coming in and how the box is going to take shape. Now don't use a bone folder if you're using designer series paper. If you're making this out of cardstock, by all means use your bone folder. But with designer paper you're going to find it'll just tear. So you only need to score it with your fingers. So when the, all the score lines have been folded up, you can kind of get an idea of how the box is going to look. And what you're going to do is cut some flaps in the very bottom. Oh, before we do that, I have a really good tip for scissors. My friend Katrina showed me this. Thanks, Katrina. If you have the adhesive remover and you have a lot of glue on your scissors and you just do that, it, they're shined up good as new. So got to have that adhesive remover. It's great. Okay, now I've got my nice sharp scissors coming in and cutting a flap just there on the bottom. So you've got two flaps that are going to fold up and then you're going to turn your paper 90 degrees no, sorry, 180 degrees. <laughs> and you are going to yeah, turn it from the bottom to the top and then cut the same flaps again. And that's all the cutting that you do to make this box. It's a really simple, fast box. So with those flaps, you're going to add some snail. And if you're doing this in cardstock, you might use double-sided tape or sticky strip or even some glue there. But because it's designer series paper, it's a very light box. So snail is perfect and then you're going to put snail on the other flaps and I actually think this is not quite how I intended to do it it's a little bit awkward the way I'm doing this I probably should have snailed all those flaps down before I started folding but it still works okay it just looks a little bit awkward and gangly <laughs> but yes we've got the snail on there okay and so we're just going to fold up a second I'm going to fold that up so that it is nice and neat at the edges and that's your box pretty much done you can see it opens from the top and then it closes up and it's not secure yet because I have a neat way of securing this box by adding a card on top of the box and then tying it all together now I have a piece of rich razzleberry cut at 26 by 13 some DSP at 12 by 12 centimeters and the stamp set that I'm using is the Gifts of Kindness stamp set. This little image down the bottom. 
I love this flower because it has spots on it, which kind of echoes the design series paper. I've cut that out with the second largest frame from the window frames collection. And I've stamped the flowers at an angle, as you can see, so that I could fit the sentiment in. And now you're going to fold that cardstock in half. And you can use the same tool that you have in your envelope punch board. If you don't have a bone folder, this will give you a bone folder. Now you could use it that way. I had a look at it and I thought, no, I really want to stick with these small spots. Love this rich Razzleberry colour. Now I'm going to give you a tip here. When you adhere your layers, make sure the corners are really well stuck down. And I even allow that snail to come off onto my grid paper there so that I know that has reached the edges. There's nothing worse than making a card and then the edges flap up. That just looks really pretty bad, I think. So now some dimensionals are going on that focal image. And I'm putting one on each corner and I'm going to put two in the middle because it's a fairly big size framelet and I don't want to just squish down too much. Just take those backs off. This cup is going to go together pretty quickly. Then just line it up and then the next thing I'm going to show you is I have a purple sharpie and I have coloured the large rhinestones from the regular set and the really jumbo rhinestones as well. I've coloured one in red as well. I think I was starting on another project. This is purple and I've made sure it was dry before I put it on my project so you don't smudge it. And there's the larger size from the middle size pack. And you can see how pretty that is. It's actually a really good match. There's all the Sharpies that I've been collecting. Every time I see Sharpies, I collect a different colour, so I'll have a match for all of my rhinestones and pearls. Now, I've just used the top of the floral image on each of the four corners of a wisp of white piece cut at 12 by 12 centimetres. And I've put the thank you from the top of that onto the centre of the card. And again, you can see how I'm really going into those corners first, and it means you need to use much less snail than you would usually use. It's a really handy tip. <laughs> and there's the card. Isn't it pretty? I was really happy with how that turned out. Now here is the clever part. We're going to pop that on top of the box so that the box stays shut with the card on top. Then when you open the box, you've opened the card and when you're looking at the card, the box will open as well. So it's a pretty neat little trick and I was really happy when I figured out how to do this. Now I'm just using some white baker's twine and I've got quite a lot of it there. I've probably have a little bit more than I needed, but I wanted to make sure that it went all the way around the box. Now you can see how I'm putting the baker's twine onto the stems of that flower so that it looks like it's a little bouquet that's held together with a bow. This is the idea that I wanted for this anyway. And it's a bit tricky, it's almost like you need an extra pair of hands to help you keep it nice and tight, but I did manage to tie it into a double knot. Then once it was in a double knot, I tied a double bow. And you'll find that whoever's opening this will just be able to slip this baker's twine off. So they don't need to untie it to get it off the box. Now I'm just going to tie a bow. And then when the bow's tied, I'm just going to pull the loops in so that they're much smaller. And then I'm just going to cut off the excess on the ends there. You can see how it looks like a little bouquet with some um, twine around the stems there. So I've actually put this a little bit off to the left and um, a little bit lower than I would if I was tying this in the centre of the box. And I love the way that turned out. I think that was really a nice accent that I put on there. Okay, I'm just using it, making sure it's exactly in the right spot. So I have a lot of these projects planned over the next couple of weeks just using the polka dot parade paper. And if you have one stack of designer series paper, then I have lots and lots of projects that you can do using boxes. They're all going to be bright and beautiful and it's going to be absolutely a blast making these. I know I'm going to have a lot of fun doing this. So here's the first one and I hope you enjoyed it. So stay tuned for more bright and beautiful boxes over the next couple of weeks. Bye for now.